Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with some crooks, robbing weapons carriers in Odessa, Ukraine. They also slaughter scientists, and steal super sophisticated AI weapons. An agent named Nathan is summoned to the government office. When Nathan arrives, Knighton assigns him the duty of retrieving the AI weapon, that had been taken two days before. Nathan initially refuses this mission. However, he consents to execute this job after Knighton warns, if the weapon falls into the wrong hands, it can be dangerous to the planet. Nathan offers a super spy to lead his forces on this mission, and his name is Orson. Knighton initially declines, because the charge is extremely high. He advises Nathan to engage John's services instead. However, Nathan states John is currently working for his opponent, Mike. Knighton finally consents, because there are no other options, and Nathan travels to Africa to meet Orson, who is still recovering. Nathan states his reasoning, but Orson flatly declines, because he is healing at the moment. After Nathan explains that the fee is quite high, and that the mission is tied to global security, he accepts, and they travel to Madrid, to begin the mission, where they find two people waiting for them, Sarah and Davis. Sarah is an excellent hacker, and Davis is a sniper who excels in every aspect. So they are both hired to assist Orson on this mission. Later, they head to the airport, to steal the hard drive from Donald, a delivery man. They also divide the tasks, Sarah in the office hacking the camera, and directing the squad via microphone, while Orson Davis and two others, Jane and Marcia keep an eye on Donald's actions. Things are not as simple as they seem, because there are other teams interested in the hard drive as well. They paralyze Jane and Marcia, without Sarah noticing. She eventually learns that other hackers are manipulating the cameras. When Orson hears this, he realizes that the culprit is John, working with opponent Mike. Sarah, who manages to hack the computer, instantly informs Orson that he will be attacked from behind by two people. He quickly goes out to apprehend Donald after defeating them. Mike's men had already preceded them, so there is a fight. Nathan arrives to pick them up after they succeed. Donald suffers a heart attack in the vehicle, and at the same time, there are some cars chasing them and cutting their route to seize the hard drive. Seeing that Martin is about to kill him, Donald reveals an essential fact, he is forced to do so since his wife is being held prisoner. Still, the person who is going to buy this hard drive has not yet seen his face. As a result, Donald asks Nathan to meet the customer at the Duchess in Madrid, while masquerading as Donald. Shortly after, the old man asks them to save his wife, and dies. They are also fighting against time, since Mike's crew is forcing them to open the car door from outside. When the data has been duplicated, Mike opens the car door, and takes a copy of the hard drive. Sarah explains that they don't need to be concerned, because it is useless without a password. Nathan's only option is to disguise himself as Donald, in order to discover who purchased the hard disk. He does so, and meets with the buyer. Sarah, who recognizes his face from a hidden camera, discovers that one of them is Ben Harris, a lawyer, for an illicit arms dealer mafia boss, Greg Simmons. Seeing this, Orson gets despondent and doubts his ability to apprehend Simmons, who is extremely agile, and one of the world's biggest arms dealers. Sarah notices Simmons has a soft spot for orphans, and a crush on an artist named Danny Francisco, and she gets the bright idea to capitalize on it. They return to America quickly to pick up Danny Francisco, and disguise themselves as Danny's new agent. Orson is able to speak alone with Danny. There, he requests Danny's assistance in attending a charity event hosted by Simmons, in France. Danny first resists vehemently, but after Orson shows a video of Danny and his sister-in-law, he is shocked. He doesn't want the video to ruin his big name, so decides to obey Orson's command. The three of them immediately board a boat. When Orson and Sarah arrive aboard the cruise ship, where the event is taking place, they urge Danny to distract Simmons, while they gather as much information as possible. When Simmons sees Danny, he quickly approaches him, and demands to speak with him. Orson and Sarah, who devise the plan, happen to see Mike's guys, who are already at the airport. They recognize Mike is also looking for information here. So they split off, and Sarah goes into one of the rooms, to set up a microphone, while Orson trails behind and beats Mike's men in a cool manner. Sarah gets discovered by Ben Harris, and uses her acting skills to fool him and buy Orson some time. Later, she checks on Orson, and goes to meet Danny on the deck. Simmons invites Danny and Sarah to visit his property in Turkey because he wants to show off his lifestyle and money. His business associates arrive soon, and they want to take a photo with Danny, while Simmons whispers to Sarah, and asks her to be his mistress, promising to give her a large portion of his riches. When Orson arrives, he asks everyone to leave. Moving to Nathan and Davis, 
who are listening in on Simmons' talk with his business partner. The chat indicates that the AI weapon will be sold for $10 billion, and more crucially, Simmons is merely acting as a mediator, because the name of the original bidder has not been divulged. The next morning, they hold a briefing and try to discover who would purchase the AI weapon. Orson finally chooses to break into Simmons' partner's house, to collect the buyer's information, because he has no other option. He does so with anesthetic gas, later in the evening, dispersing the gas throughout the room, with assistance of Sarah, who hacks the CCTV. He enters the bedroom after everyone has passed out, and is able to open the safe, and copies all of the data using Sarah's instructions. When he finishes, he snatches all of their money and jewels, in order to fool them into thinking it's a theft. However, as he is about to leave the door, he is apprehended by two conscious guards, but promptly deceives them. They gather again in the morning, to go over the results of the study from the night. However, after searching it, they are unable to locate what Simmons intends to sell. They overhear Simmons and someone named Kasim shortly after. There, Kasim asks Simmons if their colleague Alexander has been robbed, by an unknown person the night before. According to the inquiry, the perpetrator was alone, and effortlessly defeated two of Alex's personal bodyguards. Since his identity is unknown, Orson appears calm hearing this. Sarah, who is still hacking their data, discovers Kasim's present location and identity. He turns out to be a Turkish government figure. They also now know Simmons and Kasim will have a covert rendezvous in three days. Nathan instructs Sarah and Danny to accept Simmons' invitation, to visit his villa in Turkey, in order to find out what they will do. They arrive in Turkey, and are greeted warmly by Simmons and his bodyguards. Simmons, not wanting to waste time, promptly displays his whole collection of old cars, and quickly gives Danny one of his cars, and they go for a drive. Sarah, left at the villa, hurries to carry out her plan to hack Simmons' computer. She turns around to hack the CCTV overhead, which is viewed directly by Amelia, Simmons' assistant. Back to Orson and Davis, who are watching Kasim's moves. Orson is taken aback when he notices Mike, who is also watching Kasim, and decides to pursue Ben Harris in secret, after seeing him. Sarah begins searching for information on Simmons' computer, and figures it out and informs Nathan, Simmons only bought the AK-47 that was robbed at the beginning. Nathan is angry when he hears it, since they have the wrong guy, because Simmons is not the buyer of the AI weapon they are seeking. He asks Orson to return, since they are suspecting the wrong guy, but Orson, certain that Simmons is involved, resolves to continue tracking Ben in secret. Ben, who is aware of the situation, immediately notifies Simmons. Naturally, Davis, who has tapped Ben's phone, also informs Orson that Ben is already aware. Ben requests reinforcements from Simmons. Hearing this, Orson quickly ambushes, and easily defeats Ben's guard. Ben attempts to avoid capture by stealing someone's motorcycle. Orson pursues him using a shortcut, with Davis's assistance. Ben has an idea to trick Orson, noticing that there is someone else. He pretends to ask for help in getting photographed, and covertly places his phone in that person's pocket. Even though the location point is correct, Orson does not discover him, and is perplexed, then he peers down and sees a corpse lying below, it is the previous person who was pushed by Ben. Orson is caught off guard and Ben tries to push him as well. Fortunately, he is able to evade Ben because of his quick reflexes. When they arrive at the headquarters, Knighton informs them the data transmitted by Sarah from Simmons' computer is authentic and accurate. If they are going to perform a hard drive transaction to activate the AI weapon, it's no joke, the weapon has the capability of launching a nuclear assault. Considering that the individual who will buy the hard drive has never met Ben, and he is dead, Orson ultimately decides to disguise himself as Ben, and asks Sarah for aid in changing his voice to sound more like Ben when he calls Simmons later. Orson quickly meets the buyer of the hard drive once all of the plans are perfectly organized. Simmons, who has no idea Ben died, appears normal, and excuses for a moment to phone Ben to assist with the deal. Davis, who has followed them from behind, promptly dives down to snipe Orson. We discover the buyer's name is Sergey. The buyer, not wanting to waste time, opens the hard drive suitcase, and requests Orson enter the 15-digit passcode to unlock it, who obtains the code requesting help from Sarah. Simon has been effectively duped. His guards understand at that point someone is listening in on their talk. They are able to enter Simmons' codes, and a $10 million deal is completed. However, one of Alex's men notices that Orson is the one who had looted Alex's house a few nights back. Davis takes the initiative to assault them first, and there is a violent shootout. Sarah, who has also cancelled the purchase, escapes there with Danny. Back to Orson, he is being pursued blindly by one of the helicopters. When the men corner him, 
it is revealed that they are Mike's guys. Mike and his men, who have managed to apprehend Sergei, murder them mercilessly, and take away the AI weapons. Mike directed his soldiers to execute Orson. However, before that, Davis follows them to protect Orson. Simmons, realizing Sarah is the hacker, instantly dispatches his security to track down Sarah and Danny. She brings down one of Simon's guards' cars. They can only sprint back to Orson and Davis, who are attempting to save Sarah via helicopter, because the rounds have run out. When Orson discovers Sarah's location in the tunnel, he instantly pursues her, and launches missiles at their adversary. Nathan determines that Mike is plotting something evil, after learning from the authorities that he does not work for any government. Hearing this, Orson comes up with the brilliant idea of utilizing all of the proof of Simmons' crime, and asking him to assist with it. The entire squad is skeptical at first, but Orson persuades them, and they return to Simmons' camp. Orson immediately proposes to Simmons to assist them in reclaiming the weapons, who first refuses, but after being persuaded by Danny, he consents to assist. Next, he reveals to Mike who he would sell AI weapons to. In the meantime, Davis, and Sarah take action on the other side. Sarah disrupts the guards' communication using a drone, while Orson and Davis incapacitate them all. When they arrive at the room, they discover that Mike had sold the weapon to Trent and Arnold, during the previous charity event, they are Simmons' business partners, and it is revealed that they bought it to undermine the world's currency, causing chaos and anarchy worldwide. While Simmons distracts them, Orson and Davis secretly kill all of Mike's men. When Orson is about to run away with the AI weapon, Mike tries to attack from behind. However, Orson manages to beat him easily. After that, Orson is picked up by Davis and Sarah. The next morning, they travel to Qatar, to present Nathan with the AI weapon. Since the mission was successful, Nathan hands them another assignment, with considerably better compensation. But Orson declines, stating that they need to go on vacation to rejuvenate their heads. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.